November 21st Booster 18's LOX tank catastrophically failed during testing. The explosion ripped the vehicle apart so badly that not a single section could be salvaged. SpaceX had to laser cut it piece by piece for recycling. What would you do if your rocket exploded just weeks before launch? Most companies would delay for months, but by November 26th, just five days later, Booster 19's first section rolled into Mega Bay 1. Ship 39 now stands fully stacked with complete heat shield. How is Flight 12 still on track? The pressure hit SpaceX's workforce immediately. With Booster 18 destroyed, every major milestone for 2025 suddenly hung in the balance. Reaching orbit, catching Starship with the tower, the first orbital refueling demo. All of it threatened by one catastrophic test failure. So what did they do? On November 26th, just five days after the explosion, the first section of Booster 19 rolled out of Star Factory straight into Mega Bay 1. The next day, the Common Dome section followed. November 29th, the A3 Coal 4 section. December 2nd, another section arrived. By December 4th morning, the A64 section entered MB1, quickly followed by the bottom half of the transfer tube. In just nine days, SpaceX rolled every major section needed to build an entire super-heavy booster. Nine days. The process normally takes one to three months. How does a company move that fast under pressure? They didn't just roll the parts in. They stacked most of them immediately. On December 7th, the massive fuel transfer tube entered Mega Bay 1. This component is so large it matches the diameter of a Falcon 9 booster. Four sections already stacked, the giant tube ready for mounting, then the common dome goes on top. After that comes the real work. Plumbing, wiring, pneumatics, sensors, avionics, every internal system that makes a rocket function. That phase alone takes another one to two weeks. By December 23rd or 24th, Booster 19 should be structurally complete and ready for cryogenic testing at Massey's by month's end. But here's where it gets interesting. After cryo-testing passes, Booster 19 rolls back to Mega Bay 1 for final integration. The grid fins get installed, the catch points added, and then the moment everyone watches for. SpaceX brings in each Raptor 3 engine, one by one, mounting them onto the booster. 33 of the most powerful methane engines ever built. Then comes the rollout to Launch Pad 2, expected around January 20th. Can they really maintain this accelerated pace? Now let's talk about Ship 39. Mid-November, it was just separate sections slowly being stacked inside Mega Bay 2. Then on December 8th, spotters caught it again. Completely different story. Ship 39 now stands as a fully stacked, seamless vehicle. The heat shield system almost entirely installed, giving it that dark, glossy, intimidating appearance. For a brand new Block 3 vehicle, the team only started real progress around mid-August, when the S-39 nose cone first rolled into Mega Bay 2. Four months, they fully stacked the largest rocket upper stage in the world in just four months. Compare that to NASA's SLS upper stage, which takes two to four years to complete. What's the secret to SpaceX's speed? The answer lies in their testing strategy. Ship 39 doesn't have its Raptor engines yet and still needs hardware checkouts before rolling to Massey's, expected by this week's end. But SpaceX already built a dedicated test tank called S-39.1. On the night of December 4th, this tank went through a full cryogenic test for roughly seven hours. The frost line barely shrank throughout the test. That's a good sign. The tank held pressure well, kept temperature stable, didn't leak. These test tanks use the same propellant tank geometry as the real ship. They're meant for stress testing, pushing the structure to its limit before mass production. 
If S39.1 passes, Ship 39 very likely passes too, unless some unrelated issue appears. After the cryo test wraps up around December 16th or 17th, Ship 39 heads back into Mega Bay 2 for engine installation. Not just any engines, the most powerful, most expensive methane engines on the planet. Then it rolls back out to Massey's for its static fire campaign. This time things move faster. No need to bring it all the way to launch pad one. No complicated steps like mounting that stool on the OLM anymore. The OLM is basically stripped down now. All the legs gone, crews clearing out surrounding infrastructure. Even the compressed gas tanks from Pad 1's deluge system are being removed one by one. If everything stays on track, Ship 39 gets its static fire in the last week of December or early January 2026. After that, it comes back in for final checkouts, payload installation, and FTS integration. Launch window, somewhere between January 24th and 27th, 2026. That's not far off from the original timeline before Booster 18's incident. The SpaceX engineering teams are moving fast, pushing hard, doing everything to keep momentum. But the vehicles are only part of the equation. Launch Pad 2 has been changing dramatically. They ran another round of flame deflector testing to ensure the whole system is in perfect shape. This matters because we're not dealing with 33 Raptor 2 engines anymore. We're dealing with 33 Raptor 3s. Super Heavy's liftoff force will be more than 22% stronger. Remember, Starship's very first test flight in April 2023. Back then, Super Heavy used 33 Raptor 1 engines, producing around 7.5 million pounds of thrust. It blasted out a firestorm with extreme heat and pressure. When it lifted off, it left behind a crater almost 9 meters deep. Rocks and metal flew hundreds of meters away. Windows shattered on SpaceX employees' cars. Houses shook from 5 kilometers out. Elon Musk was thrilled because it showed the system's power. But the aftermath gave him quite a headache. Thanks to that lesson, the new pad design is much tougher and far more advanced. The updated OLM structure is stronger. The water deluge system sprays around 7,000 gallons per second. With the flame trench added, the insane power of Super Heavy Block 3 is now fully controlled. Pad 2 is in good shape. But on December 5th, SpaceX made one unusual move. They removed two huge hydraulic actuators from the Pad 2 chopsticks. Just last week before that, the accumulators supporting those actuators were also removed. Why would they do this right before a critical flight? This suggests SpaceX is inspecting and upgrading the entire hydraulic package. Earlier tower tests possibly revealed something. Insufficient push force, slower response time, or uneven damping in the system. That would explain pulling the actuators for an upgrade, likely replacing them with higher flow, more stable, and more precise units. The actuators went to the Sanchez site for work and will be reinstalled once upgrades are done. This lines up perfectly with SpaceX gearing up for the first Starship Block 3 flights in early 2026, a period when the giant chopsticks will play a critical role in catching both the booster and the ship. Which brings us to the ultimate question. Will Flight 12 feature both a Booster 19 catch and a Ship 39 catch? Picture this. Booster 19 returns just seven minutes after launch, dropping straight into Mechazilla's arms, then slowly lowering onto the transport stand. After cooling down from its insanely high post-flight temperature, B-19 would roll straight back into Mega Bay 1 for inspection. Later in the mission, Ship 39 comes down for its own landing attempt. If that catch works too, SpaceX would hit two historic milestones on the same flight. Starship reaching orbit successfully and the first ever ship catch by the chopsticks. A dream flight. 
the kind of moment fans would talk about for years. But honestly, the chances of that happening on Flight 12 aren't high. This is the very first test of the Starship Block 3 design. Nobody can predict what hidden risks might show up. Remember the early flights of Block 2 ships? They immediately revealed major issues. Resonance problems, leaks, several vehicles blowing up mid-air, triggering investigations, complaints, even lawsuits. That's completely normal in rocket development. SpaceX will try to avoid unnecessary risks wherever possible. Even if Ship 39 performs flawlessly in orbit, things could still go wrong during the landing attempt. Splashdown in the ocean remains the safer, preferred choice for both the ship and the booster. Booster 19 itself carries brand new upgrades. It'll attempt a belly flop landing after receiving that massive fuel transfer tube. It's the first booster flying with only three grid fins instead of four. With so many new variables packed into one flight, sending it to the ocean is simply the smarter move to protect ground infrastructure. But what does this rapid recovery really tell us about SpaceX's future? No matter how these early Block 3 flights turn out, they're all stepping stones towards something bigger. Elon Musk hasn't pushed this program since day one, just to catch rockets or reach orbit. The real goal? Making humanity a multi-planetary species. Every failure, every explosion, every nine-day sprint to rebuild a booster after disaster moves us closer to that future. What we witnessed these past 18 days isn't just about SpaceX recovering from Booster 18's catastrophic failure. It's about proving that spaceflight can operate at a pace the industry has never seen. When Boeing or NASA loses a test article, programs get delayed by years. Environmental reviews, safety investigations, redesigns, budget battles. SpaceX lost Booster 18 on November 21st. By November 26th, Booster 19 was already under construction. That's the difference. That's what makes this company unlike anything that came before. Flight 12 launches somewhere between January 24th and 27th, 2026. Ship 39 and Booster 19 will carry the hopes of everyone who believes humans belong among the stars. Whether they catch both vehicles or send them to the ocean, whether everything goes perfectly or problems emerge, this flight matters. Because after Flight 12 comes Flight 13, then 14, then 100, then 1000. Each one refining the system that will eventually take us to Mars. If you want to follow every step of this journey, hit that subscribe button and join the Atlas Space community. Drop a comment with your prediction for Flight 12. Will they attempt the double catch or play it safe? Share this video with anyone who still doubts what SpaceX can accomplish. The future is being built right now at Starbase, and we're here to cover every moment.